Let's get some practice using the Sketchpad in Wiley Plus to draw curved arrows. In this problem from Chapter 3, I'm going to uh, show the reaction mechanism of this proton transfer reaction. Uh, it's going to require two curved arrows to produce the uh, products shown. So the curved arrow tool I'm going to use is right here. It has the two electrons. And we're almost always going to be using that arrow tool, this one that has just a single electron is only going to be used when we're using radicals. That's going to be uh, pretty rare exceptions. So I'm going to use those two curved arrows. The first curved arrow is going to connect, uh, use one of these lone pairs on the oxygen to form a bond to this hydrogen atom. And uh, so the way I select one of those lone pairs is I click on the OH, the hydroxide, and it blows it up. And now I can very clearly see and point to one of the lone pairs. So if I click and hold my mouse, it's now going to connect that lone pair and now I'm, gonna, I'm going to point to where I want it to end. And I want it to end at this hydrogen atom, this proton, and now I'm forming a bond between the two. Now, you'll notice if I click on the arrow, it's going to toggle between a few different modes. This arrow starts at the lone pair, ends at the hydrogen atom, and the other curved arrow uh, shows a dotted line of the new bond that's gonna form. So either one of those will be graded the same, whichever one you prefer to see. And if you'd like to reposition the arrow, if you click and drag, it'll turn it from a clockwise arrow to a counterclockwise arrow. So maybe if that arrow is covering up some artwork and if you want to see it a little more clearly, you could do that. It gets graded the same either way, but sometimes it's easier to see that way. Uh, and now I want to break this OH bond and move those two electrons onto the oxygen atom. So again, with my arrow tool, now I'm going to click on the, on the bond and I'm going to hold my mouse and now when I drag it to the new position, again, it's kind of showing me where do you want those two electrons to land. And I want them to land on the oxygen atom, so that's where I release my mouse. If I'd like to move it, I can do so, but either position is fine. And then I'm ready to have it grade. Now we're going to explore a few more tools on the sketchpad. This is a resonance problem, and it's asking me to uh, start with this drawing and use the pattern of a lone pair next to a pi bond to show the residence that's possible. So first I have to add the lone pairs here uh, to my initial structure to complete that drawing and because I'm going to use one of those lone pairs in my residence. So using the lone pair tool I just click on an atom and it toggles. If I start with zero if I click there's one and now there's two and now there's three and now there's four and then the last click brings it back down. So it just toggles between the numbers for an O minus, I need three lone pairs. And the resonance of a lone pair next to a pi bond use two curved arrows. I'm going to click on the, the regular curved arrow that moves two electrons at a time. I'm going to click on the oxygen atom so I can uh, more clearly see any one of those lone pairs. And I can pick any one of those lone pairs. And now it's going to uh, use that as the anchor of my arrow. So my lone pair is going to become a pi bond. So just pointing to the, the single bond uh, repositions those electrons. That's what that, uh, that formalism means. And now this double bond is going to end up being, a, uh, those two electrons are going to move to this carbon. So I'm going to click on the double bond, and I'm going to use those two electrons to move on to the carbon atom. Now, that is maybe not the best positioning for that arrow. So if I want to reposition, I can click and drag. And uh, now it's not overlapping with the structure quite so much. I could do that with this one too if you want wh wherever you uh, like to see it. You don't have to reposition. It's going to grade it the same either way. Now I need to modify this structure to represent those changes. So, um, so my uh, single bond is now going to be a double bond. And my double bond is now going to be a single bond. So I could do both of those just with the single bond tool. If you click on an existing bond, it just toggles between single and double. And same thing if I click here, if I click on it, it's going to turn it into a single bond. So it's a quick and easy way to toggle between single and double bonds. Uh, now I'm also going to have charge repercussions. This O minus is now going to be neutral. That oxygen atom is going to be neutral. So the way I get rid of a negative charge is I use the, the plus tool to increase it. So instead of a negative one, it's now going to be a zero. If I continued clicking, now it'd be a plus and a plus two and a plus three and so on. So this uh, increases the charge in a positive way. So to go back neutral now, I'd use the negative to go from plus four to plus three plus two back down to neutral. Okay. And, uh, and so I'll keep on this negative tool because the, this carbon atom is now going to be negatively charged. So just clicking on the carbon atom 
adds the negative charge. And this problem is now complete. Uh, the Marvin sketch tool does not grade lone pairs. So they, they're, we, we are going to have different lone pairs now on the oxygen and a lone pair on the carbon. Um, and you can add those, but it's going to score it the same either way. So, um, so I actually uh, try and discourage students from adding the lone pairs because if they added the wrong number of lone pairs and it said it was correct, they may, I may be you know, thinking that they did the right thing. So I don't have to add the lone pairs in my final uh, answer there and it shows that it's correct.